Yes! Bravo! Bravo! You the man, bitch! How's it going, guys? It's time for another race review. We were at Pocono this week, as you guys know. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Xfinity race as well, just so we could compare it to the Cup race, because if you didn't know, the Xfinity race ran the different aero package, so um, I'll just tell you right away, the race today was was pretty good. I actually really enjoyed it, so let's talk about it. So on the poll, you had Ryan Blaney, and it was going to be interesting to see if he would be able to replicate what he did last year when he was able to beat Kevin Harvick for his first career cup win, but it kind of came really early on in stage one that he wasn't going to be able to do it. Car was pretty good with clean air for the first five to ten laps, and then after that, no more. He was able to kind of run in the top ten, but that to be able to have a race winning car wasn't going to happen, and what we saw very early on was Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, and Martin Truex Jr. being pretty good and being the class of the field. I mean, those three guys were able to pull out a gap on the rest of the field in stage one. Um, it would be Harvick leading, then Truex, or, or Harvick leading, then Kyle Busch, then Truex. It'd be those three, and then it would be a 10-second gap to fourth place, which I think was probably Clint Boyer sometimes and, and some other guys. Denny Hamlin was around that area. Kyle Larson was around that area as well. Ryan Blaney as well. And the stages were 50 laps, so you would want to break up the stage in terms of fuel mileage. They could go around 34 to 38 laps, I think, on fuel. So you just wanted to break it up in the right way. Um, so you just want to go probably like lap 25 pit. There were some guys like Joey Logano, Brad Kozlowski that did different strategies. Paul Wolf and Brad Kozlowski planned it out differently throughout stage one and stage two, how they were going to do their pit strategy. Um, but most guys kind of pitted around when they should have. Uh, and that allowed Harvick and Kyle Busch and Truex to keep going, keep the, keep the lead. And at the end of stage one, Martin Truex Jr. would win it. But then during the pit stops, he would have an issue and go all the way to the back of the pack and have to work his way back up for stage two. So as stage two starts, Brad Keselowski on that different strategy takes two tires. He's up towards the front, but he's not able to hold it completely. He did a good job staying around in second place where Kyle Busch got around him. Kevin Harvick was leading Kyle Busch in second and same kind of ordeal. Those two pull away. Truex is trying to fight his way back into the top 10. And even though there weren't many incidents or anything like that, there was good racing. If you watch the race, you know, I, I can't really explain it, but there was good racing from, let's say, top 10 areas. Uh, even the lead when it wasn't really... When Kyle Busch or Kevin Harvick wasn't, weren't in the lead, like that's when Keselowski was in the lead at the beginning, it, it was more packed up, and it was more you, you could get a run off the corner you could try. Definitely around the 5th, 10th place area, anywhere 5th on back, uh, there was a lot of passing, a lot of good racing, a lot of 3 wide and heading into certain corners. Turns 1 and 3 were especially really good. I was actually surprised by how much cars, I think the track was able to wear to a point now that these cars were able to as much to off throttle time as they're on at turn in turn one and turn three, they're able to get a good run coming off the corner. And that's where you saw a lot of the passes. You saw them getting off the throttle in turn one and turn three, getting back on the throttle, get a run off the corner, side draft on the straightaway, clear before you head into the tunnel turn. Or get the run coming out of turn three, get side draft them and get clear before you head into turn one. It was not ideal to go side by side into turn one going 205 because of the side force that the cars have. If you tried pinching someone down, heading into turn one on old tires, you, you really wouldn't work out. So a lot of guys usually would just, if you cleared them, you, you went. That was it. Turn two, you saw some passing, but obviously not as much because in history, turn two is just a little bit of a faster corner, a little bit more difficult to get a pass. And with this car, if you're going faster corner speed, it's going to be more difficult. It was very obvious, but I just found a really funny correlation in this race because obviously you guys know I don't like the car, but in this race, the most off-throttle time was where the most passes happened. So turns one and turns three. Uh, when we go to the Xfinity race, you'll notice that, and, and the All-Star race, the package that they're trying in NASCAR is to add more on-throttle time, wide open. So just my opinion, I think it's a terrible wrong way to go. But just, I think this race actually showed something that, hey, if you could just get the car, the body of the car, not the aero package, the actual car itself, to work better through the air and to clean it up, which hopefully Gen 7 will do, off throttle time is the way to go. If it's just it's painfully obvious. Turn two, a lot of cars had to either back off and just follow in line, or they just weren't able to get a run coming out of turn two, unless the car in front of them got in, in dirty air and made a mistake. So just something that I think is very obvious to most race fans and most most people. But I just want to point out there because I just saw that that difference between the Xfinity race and the the Cup race there. So the ability that these cars had to get runs on someone coming out of the corner because there was just that much off throttle time because I think the pavement, I just think it was it was more worn out this year. I, I don't remember the differences to last year, but it was it definitely seemed a little bit more worn out. It definitely seemed like there was more off throttle time here. 
and guys were able to get good runs. So back into the results, stage two would go to Kevin Harvick. He would end up winning the stage, and Truex would have to fight his way back into the top five area. And then the final stage, you had the main three guys again. You had Truex, Kyle Busch, and Kevin Harvick up towards the front. It was cool to see not one dominant car. Like, all three of them were fairly equal. Whoever was in the lead had the advantage, and you weren't able to pass them because of clean air. But then that leader, let's say like let's say Harvick was the leader, then goes back to the third behind Truex and Kyle Busch. Now Harvick can't pass Truex and Kyle Busch, so obviously a little bit of the clean air issue. In stage three, Kyle Larson and Derek Cope had a little bit of an incident. I don't know why Derek Cope is still on the track. I understand he has the right to do it, but he's 59. He is slow as shit. I don't get why he's on the track. I'm pretty sure Kyle Larson understood that as well, and he decided to turn him coming out of turn three. So Larson probably wasn't happy with him being on the track. And if you were able to listen to Scanner, probably you'd hear many drivers be like, why is that 99 on the track? And as a driver, it is very frustrating to have to lap the same car over and over and over again. Why he's on the track, I do not know. So that brings out a caution. We restart the race. Fuel mileage is now kind of out of the question because they pitted with around 35 to go. So we're going to be able to go green from here. And then Denny Hamlin gets a little bit loose underneath Alex Bowman, gets into him. Uh, damages Bowman's car, but Hamlin also gets damage on the front end. He's out of the race. This was about 10 laps into a green flag run, so now pit strategy comes in. Harvick and Truex decide to stay out. Kyle Busch decides to pit. Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson behind Harvick and Truex decide to stay out as well. So four cars in total stayed out, but mostly everyone else pitted. Some guys with two tires. Kyle Busch would end up restarting eighth. Chase Elliott has the worst deal out of all this because he had to restart third on the inside line. Once the outside lane gets going, he is now the first car in old tires and he gets completely destroyed, goes back up to ninth place before another caution would come out. Under that caution, Chase Elliott pits because Gustin knows he made a mistake, so Elliott's pretty much out of the race. He was running top 10, top 5 most of the race, but now he's completely gone. And then on the restart, Eric Jones and Joy Logano have a little bit of an issue. Logano apologized on the radio. It's just as simple as Logano was trying to make it three wide, just misjudged it. He was already on the bumper of Eric Jones and has sent him sideways and Jones went into the wall. He was already having not the greatest of days, but this just kind of added on to the bad day. Now this final restart was very important just in terms of how they lined up. So Truex was still in the lead, Larson was still second, but Harvick and Kyle Busch switched from the previous restart before Harvick was in third and Kyle Busch was in fourth. So Kyle Busch was in the outside lane, Harvick was in the inside lane, but this time now Kyle Busch is on the inside lane and Harvick's on the outside lane. And that's really good to be on the outside lane, fourth in line, because you're just able to follow the leader and get a good start. Harvick doesn't get the best of starts. Kyle Busch is able to get around him through the tunnel turn, I think it was. And then he's just not able to run down Larson or Truex. And it just goes to show the, the clean air that still does matter. When, when you're at the top of the field, when you're in that top five and everyone's fast, and that's when clean air really, really matters, like a lot. And you could see that Kyle Busch had fresh tires, but once he got with the, the big boys, once he got to Larson, Truex, and Harvick, he had a, a very difficult time trying to pass them. He could pass cars behind them, you know, he could pass an Elliott, he can pass a Hamlin, he can pass a Jimmy Johnson. But once you get to the big boys, the really fast cars that have been fast all year, much more difficult. Truex goes on to win the race, he gets another win on the season. He's able to, look. it looks like, put himself in the conversation of Harvick and Kyle Busch. I don't think he's as good as Kyle and Harvick yet this season. I don't think the car is the, the most outright speed, but he's there. I think he's definitely the third best car of the season. Going to your race results, Martin Truex Jr., Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, and Brad Kozlowski round out your top five. Ryan Blaney, Eric Almarola, Jimmy Johnson, Joey Logano, and Chase Elliott round out your top ten. A number of interesting drivers in there. Brad Kozlowski has a good solid top five finish. Kyle Larson finishes second amongst Truex, Kyle Busch, and Harvick. So Larson still knocking on the door. The car is... Not there yet, but they're trying. Ryan Blaney runs solid all day. Probably a little disappointed the car wasn't faster, so he finishes in sixth place. Eric Almarola gets another top 10. I think there's a stat out there. Someone tweeted it at me that if Eric Almarola gets one more top 10, then he has more top 10s in the 10 than Danica had in her entire career. So I don't think I have to add anything more to that. Jimmy Johnson in eighth. A top five last week and a top 10 this week. Do I think that Jimmy is back on track and ready to compete for a championship? Hell no. But it's better. It's it's minuscule improvements. You know, when you're struggling so much as an organization, you have to find some positivity and baby steps. Baby steps back up the mountain. Right now, they're at the bottom of the mountain and they have to crawl their way back up. And it takes time. It takes a good amount of time to get their way back up. You saw Chase Elliott in 10th place as well. So 200 cars in the top 10. That's good. I mean, that's, that's good uh, for them. For now, with where they are, they're at, it's good positive momentum. They obviously need to work a little bit more on the cars, but there's improvement there. So for all you Hendrick fans, including me, improvement, will it do anything this year? I'm still going to say no. I don't think any of their drivers will compete for a championship. 
but improvement. Paul Menard in 11th, Austin Dillon in 12th. Austin Dillon always chills around right outside the top 10 area. He either gets that 10th place or he's right outside of it, which for Austin Dillon, I don't think I've given him enough credit this year. The RCR cars are not good and he's doing a good job. I mean, I think he's doing a good job for the caliber of ride that he's in. His brother, Ty Dillon, I don't think he deserves to be in the 13, but Austin Dillon, I do like the talent that Austin Dillon is showing with the equipment he has. I'd like to see him in a better car, to be honest, but I don't know when it will happen, so we'll see. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., again, doing good with the equipment that he has. Uh, Roush Fenway car, not doing great, but top 15, and Jamie McMurray in 15th place. Chris Buescher, William Byron. William Byron finishes 18th. I don't think that was a fair result for him. He did run better. Same with Alex Bowman, who you see in 27th. He had the damage, obviously, but they did run better. They were right outside the top 10. Jimmy and Chase Elliott were able to be in the top 10, or Jimmy was either right outside of it. Chase Elliott was mostly top 10, maybe top 5. Alex Bowman and William Byron was right outside of it. So not the finishes they deserve, but they ran better too. So minuscule improvements. Kurt Busch in 19th struggled all day. I have no clue what it was. I don't know if he had a penalty. I don't know if the car just sucked. I think the car just sucked. It was odd to see. The 41 struggled really, really bad. And so did the 14 of Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer, again, in the beginning of the race, he was all right. He was running top five. And then something just happened in the middle of the race. The car lost the handle completely and he fell back. Very weird to see. Just very odd to see those two SHR cars, how quickly they fell off. And then the rest of your results, you can see Bubba Wallace gets a last place finish. He had an engine issue. He was doing, he did the same thing that uh, Kevin Harvick and Dale Earnhardt Jr. did last year, which is when they're shifting from third to fourth, he accidentally shifted in a second. I don't know what causes that, but he said that it was just a mistake and that he shifted in a second. It revved the RPM all the way up to 10,000. Engine done would not fire after that. So Bubba gets a last place finish. And those are your results for the Cup Series. I think most people would agree it was better than the Xfinity race. Uh, the Xfinity race, the package failed, I would say. Definitely at Pocono. And that's my worry with that package. If you want to be wide open at a track that, like, let's say for turn one, where you can't be wide open... I don't understand how that package is going to work if they want to implement it next year. Like I said, I'm okay with it. I just don't think it's a good idea because I have no clue how it's going to work at bumpy, worn out surfaces. But today, the cup race, 7, 7 point, actually, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. An 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed the drivers being able to get on the throttle in the middle of the corner and get a run up off the corner. That was really nice to see. I haven't seen that in a long time. You know, I haven't seen two guys been able to run the same line on the bottom but get a run and get underneath someone. I haven't seen that in a while. I it was just refreshing to see. 8 out of 10. Good job with the Pocono race. Does it mean I like the package? Hell no. Does it mean I like the car? Please don't get my words twisted. This race can be much better with a better car, but until 2020, this was a really solid race. I'd like to see this more often. Comment down below what you thought of the race. If you like the video, make sure to like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I will see you guys later. We are going to Michigan next week, and then after that, I'm not really excited for Michigan. I think it might be all right, but with the corner speeds of Michigan, I don't, I don't think so. But after that, we have, I think, Sonoma and Daytona. If I'm, no, I'm missing a race in there. I don't know. I think Sonoma and Daytona is coming up. Daytona, obviously, in July, but Sonoma is coming up. I think Kentucky's in there as well. Don't know how I feel about Kentucky, but I'm excited for Sonoma. I want to go to a road course. We'll, so we'll see about that. I'll see you guys later. Hope you're having a great day. Peace out. Even if I tried, even if I wanted to, and I can't change. Even if I tried, my love, my love, my love, she keeps me warm.